Okay, we're back home and it looks like I just have like a giant mass of green here. <laughs> I swear it's all gonna be gorgeous. Give it like a month or two. I think that's one of the challenges though with native plants is everyone, like you go to Home Depot or Lowe's right now and it's like, it's gorgeous. Like the flowers and everything and just the colors is so pretty. But man, natives, when it, once they're in your garden, they get established and you start getting the wildlife, it's a whole nother level of beauty. So yeah, right now it just looks like a pile of green textures. That's okay. Let's go put these in place, figure out what's gonna go where. Now that I actually have plants and you know, not just what I think I'm gonna go get. What do y'all think? You want me to walk you? You want me to walk you through this? <laughs> I can walk you guys through what I just did, which was shove a lot of plants into a very small amount of space. And the thought process was, well, if you've ever watched Monty Dom, Big Dreams, Small Garden, he says put more plants in than you think you need. And I love Monty Dom, so I'm gonna take his advice, and I'm gonna put even more plants in to space than I would. So let me talk you through. So my thought process there are some parts i feel like mm, on there's other parts that i feel like yeah this is gonna this is gonna be good so i'll give you the good bag and the ugly okay so what i did is i first i started by putting my salt and peppers in place because i knew that's what i wanted so we got salt and pepper there got salt and pepper there and the salt and pepper right there so we can imagine we're gonna have like a big shrub a big shrub a big shrub and a big shrub. So I didn't want to put anything too close to these plants because eventually they're gonna get like that. And that is very big. So then what I did is one of the things I feel like I didn't do great at before, but I want to start trying to do is when I look at English cottage gardens, I definitely noticed that like we did swaths of color. And I kind of did that well back in that garden when I set it up last year, but I don't feel like I did that well here because I was more, interested in trying new plants than I was about getting like the perfect design versus there I was like a bunch of plants that I knew how they would grow in general like probably about 75% of them I had done before so I knew how they would grow how they kind of would mature through the season um, but a lot of these ones I was like I don't know I just like the idea of them so I just put them in and that's kind of how you learn especially with native plants because there's just not the amount of information out there is it's, it's just is what it is it's limited so I just wanted to test it so this time I'm trying to like put colors near each other or at the same plant so we get these really nice bunches and then we get swaths of color. So that's what was in my mind. Doesn't mean it's right, but that's what was in my mind. So the next thing I did is I came back through and um, we did the marsh rattlesnake that matches, which is apparently variation Ravinelli. I'll just put it right here on the screen because so there's two variations. There's the this type that we got at Wilcox and we also saw at Real, Little Red Wagon. And then there is this variety Ravinelli, which has the longer stems and did really well for us. So we have the one there, we have the one there, and we're gonna put the two new ones right there. Boom, we'll have a, like a little swath of like blue color. Very excited for it. The next thing I did, I don't even know what I did next, but <laughs> what I also did in addition is I put our two vanilla leaf plants or vanilla plants. I don't know, they keep flip-flopping. The nurseries have put them by both names, but there's the two vanilla plants. These are gonna kind of have a low structure like this and then they will shoot up these like thingies. I don't know what you wanna call it, stalks. And then it'll be like a bunch of flowers like this, boom. 
So I put them there because there's a lot of low stuff happening already in this area. So I think these pops of pink are gonna be really pretty. We already got yellow in the area. Oh yeah, and then I also did the Coreopsis because I knew I was gonna do Coreopsis. And the same idea, I wanted to make sure I did swaths. So this is already yellow, but it's very low to the ground and it doesn't really show a lot of yellow as of this time. So I put boom, boom, boom. So we got three, bam, with the yellow. And then I went and added one more over here. So we've got two that were already here from last year that have come back after the winter. And then bam, so now we got like a three. So just imagine yellow, yellow, pink, blue. What? I don't know which one to call this. Maybe white, mounted, whatever. Okay, so that was the idea there. Then I was like, okay, what am I gonna do with these other rattlesnake masters? So let's do, I don't wanna mix them up, but I'm putting a little clump over here. I don't know if this is the best because I get the feeling based on this leaf structure. These are more aquatically needy. <laughs> they need more water than those ones, just by the way the leaves look. So I'm taking a chance. We're just gonna put them here. We'll see what happens. You know I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> So boom, 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 blue, blue, blue. And if they're a different shade of blue or they're different something, I think it'll be nice because it'll kind of break them up a little. So it'd be like this area and then this area. Something cool happening, something else that's cool that's happening. Yay. And then I threw my Stokes Aster here because again, I wanted to like, again, have the co uh, color and these will get wider and wider and then the Stokes will come up. And then this is the point which I was like, this is a new project to kind of reset this area. So I think this is a good stopping place. And then of course there's my six milk weeds, which you see, I spread them out. I have you thinking, Jacqueline, I thought you were gonna put them all together, clumps, clumps for the flowers. But see, milkweed is a little different because it's a host plant to the monarch butterfly, which obviously is already interested in trying to swoop in on my milkweed before I've even planted it. And here's the thing is that often it doesn't get fully to flower. It does get to flower, but just like not as often. Um, you're putting in more for the, the caterpillars. Like that's why you're putting in, let's be real. So when it comes to that, I like to spread them out a little bit, one. And two, I like to put them near ground covers so that the little caterpillars can get like under because if you don't do that, Mr. and Mrs. Wasp come along and they go under each leaf very methodically. And if the caterpillars don't have anywhere else to go, not good. Also, milkweed very quickly looks like sticks multiple times a year. You're just gonna get like this looking, just like this. That's all it's gonna look like, just like bloop. It's not very cute. So you wanna put it in the middle of other stuff both for the caterpillars and for your own aesthetic appeal. So I've mixed it in with other things so that, you know, we've got some sunshine mimosa, which I don't know if I wanna let this go because it can be an aggressive grower, but we'll leave it for right now. So I got some here and also we got some Coreopsis and then I put the beach verbena here. So this will grow out and it'll do really good. It'll have a loose enough structure. I feel good about that one. And then I put the other one over there and then I put milkweed, milkweed. And now we've got milkweed here. You might not be able to see it. There's butterfly weed that I propagated last year. All my seedlings, I think they died once winter hit, but all my cutting ones did great. Bam, they're there, they're happy. And then, okay, I think that's all the plants. So beach verbenas. Now you understand why my swamp milkweeds are kind of all around town. So that bam, butterflies caterpillars, all good things. And then last but not least, ugh, I had a plan for this. And then I questioned my plan for this, which is my blue-eyed grass. I was like, at first I was like, ooh, put them together, which I've done historically. But then I was like, boom, you, you could spread them out. You know, maybe I will spread them out. I'm gonna spread them out. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just put one there, one there, one there, one there. Okay, that's what I'll do. And then boom, and then boom. Now I gotta dig like a bajillion holes, which I'm really tired. I don't really want to do right now, but for you guys, I'll do, okay, no, for myself, I'm going to dig the holes, but you can see I've crammed like a lot, like a lot, a lot of plants into a very small area. Some of these plants though, they just really tend to stay very upright. And so they're not going to fill in the space like your salt and pepper. The salt and pepper takes up a lot of space. A lot of these, they're going to come up and through. So it'll be really nice. So let's keep going. We'll dig holes. How many plants did I buy? Like probably too many. So, <laughs> I feel like this happens every time I go get native plants. I'm like, here are 7,000 plants I'm gonna buy. But hopefully this gets you guys inspired, which I'm really excited actually, because I, I know I do like little polls on Thursday just to kind of see what's interesting you guys or what's going on with y'all. And it was really cool because I've done it before where I've asked people if they're gonna put native plants in their yard or they have added native plants to their yard. And historically it's been a pretty low number, 
but during my most recent one where I asked it, 75% said yes, they're adding native plants to their garden with 20% saying maybe and only 5% saying no, which is a vastly different number than we were at uh, like a year ago. So I'm really excited because this is one of the main missions of this channel is to get you guys excited about native plants because we know that's what's best for our wildlife and you know, you guys can see it. I mean, there's just tons of butterflies here. I don't even try to like catch them on camera. They're just kind of doing their thing all the time. So let's make the butterflies and the bees and the birds happier by getting all these plants in the ground. <laughs> I really don't want to dig all these holes. I'm super tired, but that's okay. So of course I'm using my tool of choice, the Maddox, um, which I know a few of you now have gotten it and you're like, not necessarily this brand, but just like a Maddox and you've found that it's way easier to get through the soil with it. So I'm glad I was able to help, help many of you uh, be able to break through the Florida soil <laughs> to be able to get plants in. So I am using my Maddox. This is a two and a half pound one. You can't get it online, but I do have a link to one that's like basically the same. So if you want to get that in the description down below, I will... Hopefully I've been putting the names of plants on the screen. If not, I will put all the names of the plants in the description. One or the other. Depends on how long it's gonna take me to edit because that happens sometimes. All right, enough stalling. I guess I'll get, I'll dig, I'll dig, I'll dig. So I don't know how much you have followed along with this entire journey, um, but if you have, you remember that, like I think it was July or August last year, this was grass, like completely grass. And other than that little tiny strip that we like just had to pull out during our cleanup, um, it hasn't really come back through. It's really at the edges of things that I've had to like go back through, but just doing our deep mulch did a really good job. And it's really cool to see. I didn't show you guys because it's very hard to see even in person, let alone on a camera. Um, but there are a couple of the plants that we planted last year that you can't really see right now, but they are starting to come back up and through and they're just like teeny tiny little nothings right now. Um, and that's the cool thing is there are a bunch of perennial wildflowers like, like you plant once and then they're gonna go dormant. Like you're not gonna see them. <laughs> it's gonna kind of look like this. Um, and then they will come back and then they'll come back for their full bloom period, whether it's going to be spring or fall. Um, it looks like these ones are probably the Leatrices, um, the Blazing Stars, whether it's the Elegant or Graceful. You know, I was always having trouble remembering which was which anyways in this area, <laughs> but they're starting to come back. And that's why it's nice combining some of those things with like things like the salt and pepper, where the salt and pepper is here all year. Um, and it definitely is making a statement all year so it can fill the space versus some of the ones that are going dormant. Um, and that's why I try to do a bunch of experimenting. I know sometimes it doesn't always look like the best, but it's because I'm trying to try stuff in different ways so that hopefully you guys get inspired to pick maybe a couple of the plants or all the plants, <laughs> ain't saying, just saying, for your own garden. Cause it's amazing. It's amazing how much of a difference this garden has. Um, I mean, the amount of bees on the salt and pepper, plus I don't know if you guys caught it earlier when I <laughs> was showing you, but there was even some small um, marine blue or cassius blue butterflies. Those are really, really tiny butterflies on this plant. Tons of monarchs, tons of gold fritillaries in here. I did get a red admiral the other day um, when I was doing vegetable gardening. I saw that in the back. Uh, there's a weed that they like that most people try to kill, but you know, which is uh, Pelatory Floridana is the name of it. I don't know, I'll spell it right here. Um, but it comes like every late winter into a lot of people's yards and then they put uh, weed control on it and they miss out on getting red admiral butterflies. Ain't saying, just saying. And it's not one of those like weeds that's like, that's a big deal. And that's the thing I think people need to stop freaking out about is like, you have grass. A lot of people have grass. I'm, my expectation is everyone doesn't have grass, but like there's stuff that's growing in your grass that's like, I mean, if you get frog fruit in it, like, what are you worried about? It's still green. And then you get butterflies. And the same thing with the Pelatory Floridana. Like, it's green. It's not one of those plants that's going to give you, like, annoying, like, thorns or something that's going to hurt you or your dog. It's just, like, it just isn't consistent with your grass. And then you get butterflies. 
I'm just like butterflies. I got a lot of butterflies. It's kind of heading towards evening time, so the butterflies are on there. We're starting to chill out for the day, but you know, probably about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's going pretty strong. All right, is that enough of a break? Okay, that's enough of a break. I'll keep going. <laughs> I only have like, I'm like, I've done eight. <laughs> and then there's like, what, 20 more plants to go do? But just something to think about. And so um, I'll take you guys in a little bit closer to look at the soil so you can see. I mean, this was all grass. Um, you can see weeds have not taken over other than that railroad vine, which was something I planted, which maybe that was a, like a blessing in disguise because the railroad vine did a really good job of making sure everything else stayed out other than the seminal pumpkin, which we're having a great seminal pumpkin germination rate. So that's also really good. And also could be a native plant. It's on the fence. People are kind of going back and forth still about whether that is native or not. I still, I'll still tell you guys it's not native because it's not official official, but you know, it grows really well. And if it's not native to here, it's like native to Alabama, Georgia, that is for sure. It's just like, yeah, did it ever cross the state line? <laughs> Probably. So I know that was like a lot of random thoughts. That's because I'm tired and it's towards the end of the day. So, but you know what, here's the thing. Ugh, there is one thing that I keep seeing and that just tells me how many birds have been hanging out, which is this. This is Brazilian pepper. And that's because the birds have been eating it. There's a whole, shenanigans of it near my neighborhood so I'm always going to be having to stop it from getting in my yard but it does tell me the birds have been hanging out a lot right here because they've been pooping in Brazilian pepper seeds everywhere but hopefully if we can get some more of this other stuff in it's going to really make it harder for that kind of stuff to pop up and through so all right I can see the monarchs circling they're circling over there because I'm right here near their swamp milkweed and they're like Jacqueline get out of the way I want that I want to get to that and these plants, I pick, purposely picked swamp milkweeds that were like mm, about 12 to 18 inches because I knew that I already have a lot of monarch activity in the area and monarch caterpillar activity in the area. And I know that they're gonna really come chomping for these very, very quick. So I wanted ones that were gonna be able to handle it because they're gonna get chomped down pretty fast. All right, I'll dig more holes. Here we go. Let's get this weed out of here. That is one thing I've been watching out for with my, um, my native plants is I have been getting some weeds in with them. Sometimes other native plants that I may want and sometimes just other weeds that I don't want. But here you can see this was grass. All grass. And now look at it. Black gold. People pay lots of money for this. All I did was dump a bunch of mulch on it. Apparently, someone left a wrapper in there. All right. Now, this one will work out well because I have usually, when I see blue eyed grass out in, I won't say the wild, but in areas, it has typically been kind of on the swales. Um, there was a place I used to drive by on my way to from my old job down in Bradenton. And there was lots of blue-eyed grass in the median areas. And it was always near, kind of not quite the lowest point, but kind of near it. So there's a sprinkler here. So it'll be kind of like that, but not quite. It'll get plenty of water. Oh, and see, it's gonna bloom soon. So exciting.
I'm done. <laughs> I think that was like 30 plants. That was a lot. That was like a lot, a lot. I never go small with native plants. Always I'm like, big, let's go. I don't think that gets you motivated and inspired for you to try some native plants. Um, but I get it, because it's not like your typical landscaping, so it can kind of feel hard to be like, ah, what should it look like? Where should I do that? And if you're really interested, one, if you want to know what's blooming every month, um, I've been putting together a bloom series, so check that out. And two, the planner tells you what's in bloom every month. The other thing is, is if you want to kind of see what it can look like, check out this video here. You can see where one of the projects they did last year was two months later, and it looked gorgeous. So check that out. And I'll see you soon. Bye.